Thank you. The discussion points for today are registering with Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, registering with the Nebraska Medicaid EHR Incentive Program, general registration issues, we will show attestation screens and discuss attestation issues, and of course, we will close the webinar with uh, a period to go over any questions that are appropriate to discuss. I want to thank Melissa again for being here to share your experiences. And Karen, will you start the step-by-step -step explanation of a testing for AIU? Sure. Thanks, Diane. On our next slide here, registering with CMS, um, we have information on before you're able to register with the Nebraska Medicaid EHR Incentive Portal, you need to regist register with CMS. This can be accessed on the left-hand side of our portal where we have the arrow pointing via the link called Res Register with CMS, or you can also access it by the link that we have posted here. Next slide, please. Once you're on the CMS registration site, read through and click Continue on each of these screens. The last screen listed here has a box where you need to acknowledge the above statements. Next slide, please. The fourth page will be the CMS Registration and Attestation System Login page. It will ask you to set up a username and password. If you have any questions about this site, contact the CMS Help Desk and their number is listed here. It's important to note that this is a CMS site and not a Nebraska site, so we don't ha have access to this site like CMS does. They would be able to assist you with any problems that you're having registering on their site. Also note that this registration process is per provider, not per clinic. Each provider has to have their own username and password. Once you have registered on this site, be sure to submit the registration. This will enable your registration to be saved and the information to be sent to Nebraska. If you were previously regis registered with CMS at one time, please ensure that your information is still correct before you resubmit the registration. It's important to make sure the email address is correct because the email address that is used when registering with CMS is who we will send our emails to regarding the Nebraska EHR Incentive Program. Next slide, please. Once you've registered with CMS, you'll be ready to register with the Nebraska Medicaid EHR Incentive Program. You'll receive an email from us, and this generally takes 24 to 48 hours. The email subject line will read, CMS EHR Incentive Program Registration Received. Click on the link inside this email, and you'll be taken to the Nebraska portal to establish your account. You'll see the screen that we have pictured here, and you'll need to enter the information as the screen asks for. Next, you'll be required to set up a username, password, and answer security questions. On this screen that you'll be entering your information, be sure to enter the tax ID of the provider, not the payee tax ID for the, for the uh, employer. The tax ID is specific to the provider. The CMS registration number is the number that was used when setting up your registration through CMS, and the NPI number is the NPI specific to the provider. Please note that this is a separate system from CMS's system. Follow the username and password guidelines to set up an account through the EHR system. When you get to the security questions, there'll be a number of different security questions that you can choose from. Next slide, please. Once your account has been created, an activation email is sent to the email address that was used to register with CMS. The email subject line is Nebraska Medicaid EHR Incentive Program Registration Activation. Again, click on the link provided in this email to activate your account. It's important that you do this because this is a required step in order to have your account activated, and you'll be taken to the portal login page. Enter the username and password that you created during the Nebraska Medicaid EHR registration process. Please note that if your account becomes locked at any time from trying your password too much, 
contact the Nebraska Medicaid EHR team to unlock your account. We have our email address listed on the front and back of this uh, pages of this presentation. Next slide, please. We have a user manual for the Nebraska Medicaid EHR Incentive Program portal on the front page. When you, when you enter the website, it'll take you to a screen and you'll see where this green arrow is pointing the user manual. If you click on that link, you'll be taken into the user manual where you will find information such as how to complete the registration process, how to locate your provider profile information, and just some answers to general questions. The user manual is on the left hand side of our portal. Click on the link and when you're in here click on the link and it will open up the user manual for you. Melissa, regarding either the CMS or the Nebraska registration, do you have any tips that you could share to make the process easier? I think to note um, as Karen did that it is two separate systems and so that CMS registration number you will get an email with that information and make sure that you save that with your providers attestation documents um, because you will need that obviously to register with um, uh, DHHS site excuse me um, and then also as she said to make sure you click that activation link in the email that's an important step that can sometimes be overlooked Thank you very much. And I would like to ask you, if you've looked at the user manual, um, and if you could, in accessing it, tell our listeners, um, was it useful? Were you able to find what you needed easily? How did the user manual, manual operate for you? The manual does a very good job of kind of going over the vernacular of attestation, breaking down the terms, which I think is useful, and going over the step by step process of attestation. So if you have a question on a particular step, it does a really good job of going into detail about what is needed for that particular step, and I found that helpful. Well, thank you. Of course, thank those comments. Next slide, please. So once you've registered and are logged into our portal, you're ready to attest. Click on the Apply for an Incentive Attest link on the left-hand side of the main page. Next slide, please. Click on the Attest button on the left-hand side of the Provider Questions page. Please note that the Provider, EHR, and Patient Volume Questions pages should be completed in order. While you're on this page, review the provider information at the top of the screen in white. Please ensure that this information is correct. This is the information that you entered when you registered on CMS's site, so if something is incorrect, you'll need to go back out to the CMS registration site to correct it. You can save and go back into a page if you need to finish it at a later time throughout our portal. Next slide, please. So with the provider questions page, answer the questions as asked, and we have an example here of when you log into our portal what the provider questions page will look like. If need be, you can add a document to this page or any page in our portal by hitting add document in the lower corner. You will be uploading your document to your attestation, and please note that our portal is secure, so you can be assured that anything you are uploading to the attestation is kept secure. Please note that the license number that this page asks for is the, is the number that was issued to you by the state that you are currently licensed in. I have another question for you, Melissa, regarding the provider questions page. Do you have any tips in your experience in helping your providers to complete this page regarding this particular aspect? This aspect is probably the easiest portion of the attestation process, so no, I, I think that this is very straightforward. I, I really, there's no tips that I would give for this page. Okay, very good, thank you. Next slide, please. Okay, next we have the EHR questions page. Click on the attest button on the left-hand side of the EHR questions. Next slide, please. On the EHR questions page, you'll need to enter your CMS EHR certification number, the name and the version of your EHR system. If you need to upload documentation, Again, there's the Add Document button at the bottom of the screen that you can use to upload. We have a link here to the Nebraska Medicaid EHR Incentive Program website.
that includes information on how to obtain your CMS EHR certification number. You, can also, you should also be able to obtain your CMS EHR certification number from your EHR vendor. When entering your CMS EHR certification number, it's important to wait a couple minutes before clicking OK because the system is checking a large database of EHR certification numbers to ensure that the one you entered matches one of the ones in the database. Alyssa, I have a couple of questions on this page. I think we're getting deeper into the process. So regarding the EHR questions page, do you have any tips with this part of the sequence to share? Um, as you have helped your providers to complete this particular page. Yes, with this page, um, the recommendation that Karen uh, stated that you could ask your vendor for that, uh, the, the certification number, that is what we do. We reach out to our vendor, and it's important to note that as you change versions of your EMR, that number does change. So I like to save all of the attestation um, all of the data as I go through this from year to year, and that number does change as, oh. as your version changes. Very good tip. Um, and Melissa, uh, sometimes or you're referring to EHR as EMR. Yes. Essentially, that's the same thing, right? Yes, correct. Our electronic medical records, correct. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. To me, that. well, that you we could get picky. I'm sure that there's people out there, but in, for this purpose, yes, our electronic medical records are electronic health records. Okay. Correct. Thank okay. you. Thank you for that clarification, Karen. And also, um, could you describe to us the types of documentation that you have uploaded to verify your certified EHR system? Yes, we actually uh, load our contract. We have that saved, so the first and last page of our contract is what we use um, at this step. And again, I save that, and so each year I go ahead and upload that again. Great, just great so tip. Just know that we're still using the same vendor. Yep, thank you very much. Of course. Thanks. Okay, so now we're on to the patient volumes questions page. Click on the attest button next to this. Next slide, please. And here we have an example of an eligible provider patient volume questions page. This is what you see when you'll log into the portal. Fill out the questions as asked. And at any time, if you have questions about what the question is asking you, you can hover over the question and you'll be given an explanation of what, what the question is looking for. Again, with this page, Melissa, I have a couple of questions, and I think even from uh, the staff's position, this is probably probably the stickiest part of this process. So um, what data source have your providers used to calculate patient volume? Our vendor has, a, their methodology is they look at the, the data and they will pick a, a time frame for us or a suggested time frame. And that is what we generally use okay. because we're a residency program. We do most of our attestation, especially for the 90-day windows after after July 1st. Um, and in that period, we uh, our vendor will say this is a good 90 days. But for the most part, uh, we we can satisfy that anywhere. But if it depends on you know what patients you're seeing and if you're hitting those benchmarks. But our vendor does help us calculate that range. So part of the decision is a business decision because you have a residency and that date is important for new residents coming on board. Exactly. And then the other part of the decision making process, your vendor helps you. Exactly. Just okay. to make sure that we've satisfied those measures. If you had one that you were maybe right at the, maybe you were at borderline at that threshold and you needed an extra week or two, that they, it shifts those date, that date range. So I think you have answered actually the second question was how you chose the 90 day window and, and so we've discussed that. So I ended up with only one question for you this time. Thank, Thank you. you. Next slide please. Okay, on this next slide we have an example of what an eligible hospital patient volume questions page is. This page looks just like the eligible provider patient volume questions page with the exception being in question one. Um, you'll note that the required Medicaid and counter percentage for hospitals is 10%, where for eligible providers, it's 30%. Next slide, please. We offer some tips for the patient volumes questions page. 
if one of the providers in a group in a group is attesting to group volume, all the providers in the same group must attest to group volume. Refer to our website for information on, on calculating patient volume, and we have a link to our webpage here. It is helpful to attach a detailed Medicaid and counter report for the 90 days attested to for patient volume. This should include the name of the Medicaid patient, their date of birth, and the date, of the date or dates of service during the 90 days. This page asks for your Nebraska Medicaid provider number, and that number is what was used to generate the report that you created in calculating your Medicaid encounters. It's uh, very possible that we will most likely ask for your patient encounter report anyways, so it's best to attach it now at the time of attestation. Again, our system is secure so you can upload your documents safely. So again, Melissa, this is another part of the, probably the most challenging part of the attestation process. And so I want to ask you regarding the patient volume question page, do you have any tips to share from your experience with your providers in, in completing this page? Yes. Um, this is actually the page I start with. So I start with our volume. So when we, the vendor, you know, selects that 90 day range and then you run those reports generally based on that, that time frame or whatever 90 days you choose, that's when I reach out to staff and they are fantastic and they have a secure email and you can, you can, um, give them that volume and kind of work to make sure because within our system, there's a lot of variables and the denominator normally stays the same, but that, that numerator can change based on claims. And so for, for us, I work with uh, the wonderful, your, you folks, to make sure that we were, we're lining up. And so that's the first thing that I do is get that volume number uh, down, get that numerator and down the denominator because we do a test as a group. Okay, thank you. And the patient encounter criteria is, can be complex. Um, did this pose any reporting confusion? And if so, how did you work through and come to understand the concept? I think, um, again, that is something that our vendor does do very well. And, but that, it can be confusing when you're running those reports. And um, so they have suggested parameters that, that we run in that volume report is what our vendor refers to it as. And so that is why I work with staff to make sure that I didn't check the wrong box or we're at least on the same page. And so generally we're very close. And so, um, but if I have questions, that's what I do is I reach out to you folks and okay. you've been very helpful. Very good, thank you. Next slide, please. On this next slide, we talk about the payment calculation page. And as you'll notice, it's only for eligible hospitals. This does not pertain to providers. Click on the attest button on the left hand side of the payment calculation page. Next slide please. Thank you. Only hospitals that are attesting to their first year of the program need to fill out this page. This page will ask for information that can be found in either the hospital's current Medicare cost report or another audible data source. Hospitals that have attested to a prior year should review this page again to ensure it is correct. If you're an eligible provider, this page won't even come up for you. You won't even have an option to look at or fill out this page. So it, it only pertains to hospitals. Next slide, please. A little bit more about the payment calculation page. After you enter the information on this page, the Medicaid payments will be automatically calculated for each of the three years where the green arrows are pointing. Review these payments and please note that the payments are split over three years for the hospitals. The first year is 50% of the total payment, the second year is 40%, and the final year is 10%. Next slide please. Again, you can review our user manual on our portal for any uh, answers to questions such as uh, questions regarding the attestation process, details that are specific to each of the pages, and just some general questions. And again, our user manual can be located on the left-hand side of the front page of our portal. If you are having any issues or questions, you can certainly call us or email us uh, in addition to accessing the user manual. 
our contact information is on the back page of this presentation. With that next slide, please. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> with Karen's comments, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to get this slide up because this is the email address for any questions you have, and all of this material will be at a future date available on our website, also listed on this slide. Um, that really concludes the step-by-step -step presentation that we have to offer you, but I have a few more questions for Melissa. And this will give those who are viewing who have questions now that they would like to email in to do so. Um, we will wait a few minutes and see if any of those questions come in and attempt to answer them. So Melissa, you've been helping your providers attest for many years. Um, do you have any other tips that you could share beyond what we have provided to help our listeners through this process? Yes. Some things that I have um, kind of gathered along the way is we, um, we have a network, and so underneath the network we created a folder that has meaningful use, and there's, we put a blank document that has just general attestation information, kind of that first and last page of the um, contract that we discussed. And then I kind of make little cheat sheets or little notes, you know, from year to year, and I have a little document that lives underneath there. And then for each of our 36 providers, we have a folder for all of them. And then we organize their information, their CMS registration number, for example, when they first registered, and kind of keep that information in a central location underneath each provider, because from year to year, you have to refer back to it. And so that's probably what has saved me from asking the same questions to you folks every year. So, so the, the big tip from you is organize them and yes. keep them from year to year Yes, as a reference. Well, and if, if by chance you would have a DHHHS desk audit, I'm putting three H's in there, if you would have a desk audit, that's where all your information is. So we keep our vendor reports for every single provider there. We keep all the documentation that we've submitted so that um, if we do um, have an audit, we can refer back to it readily. Very good. Very good. Um, also, can you share with us your general views of the program and how it has worked for your group? It's been an immensely valuable um, resource for our group, quite frankly. We're a residency program. We've um, Those incentive payments have been very, very helpful for us into uh, migrating to a EMR that we're very happy with and meets our needs and I think that I think it's been it's been an exceptionally um, valuable thing for us to participate in I would say very good thank you very much and um, you keep talking about keeping information from year to year so I'm thinking um, you have probably experienced challenges with this process from year to year and um, are there any memorable challenges, and how did you overcome them? Well, I think the, the um, questions regarding the patient volume is probably the biggest um, hurdle that I had. And I took a screenshot of the report criteria when I got it right. <laughs> so, so I got this right, and so these were the variables that I ran for this report. And so I took a screenshot of that, and I saved it. Now the vendor report might change, but um, having that information to refer back to, at least you can, you know where to uh, start. Great. Thank you for that. Um, we have some questions coming in, and so I'm going to pose them to Karen. Um, is the patient volume duplicated in counters or unduplicated? The patient volume is calculated, it's a little hard to explain, but the patient volume is calculated in such a way that um, you may have the same patient on there 10 times over a 90 day window, but that's because they were seen 10 times. An encounter is when the provider sees the patient face to face. Um, that's how we define an encounter. So they may come in on Monday and then back on Tuesday and back on Wednesday. That would be the same patient, but three different encounters. And just to clarify and, and remind all the listeners, we are collecting these questions and we will provide probably more in-depth in depth written responses and also links to our website where 
um, or even CMS website uh, where you can find even more information. Um, we have another question. Can you explain what the benefits of attesting to numbers by group versus individual are? And this individual was looking at the slide on the patient volume question page. Lavana, could you go back to the patient volume questions page? Uh, this is the hospital, probably the provider. There you go. Uh, well, it, attesting to group or individual patient volume really depends on what's best for your practice and you as a provider. Um, oftentimes, uh, if if you're if you're a solo provider, you're you're going to be testing to individual volume if it's just you and your practice. If there's a number of providers in the practice and maybe one of the providers sees mostly or all Medicaid and the other providers hardly see any, the providers who hardly see any Medicaid patients by themselves attesting to individual volume would not qualify probably for the program. But attesting to group volume means that you look at all of the Medicaid encounters over the whole group and your bottom number, your denominator is all of the encounters total in the whole group and taking those two numbers should hopefully help the providers that don't see any Medicaid patients or a little med few Medicaid patients reach the required 30% um, threshold. Melissa, do you have any Thing to add to that? Okay. That's that's exactly correct. Um, we we see a lot of Medicaid patients, um, so for us, we don't have any that would fall underneath that threshold. Um, but if you were in a practice or with the scenario that you just outlined, that's exactly where you would where where you would um, I would use the group volume then, if you wanted to, because then you would meet the, satisfy that, and you could attest for in your scenario all three providers. Whereas if they did the individual route, really only one provider would be able to attest. And if you do attest to group volume, uh, all the providers in the group would have the same numerator and the same denominator. They wouldn't be different based on the provider. They would all end up with the same numerator and same denominator. So you only have to run that group volume one time <laughs> versus <laughs> once for every provider. Yet another uh, savings there. Um, I want, we have another question that is very specific to the individual writing in. I just want to say that this one will be responded to and any other very specific questions to a particular individual will be answered um, probably when we come back to our office site to make sure that you do get an answer. I wanted to make sure that that was understood. Uh, we are looking for questions that really have to do with the slide. Um, presentation as it stands. You want to read? Sure. Okay. It looks like we have another question just come in. Uh, the question is, how would we know if Medicaid patients are enrolled in other state Medicaid programs? Melissa, do you have any out-of-state Medicaid patients? No. No. Okay. No. And our volume, and it might be just a um, filter that our vendor has that I think we only see the Nebraska Medicaid, to my knowledge. Okay. I, I would think that would be in, um, I would think that um, when the when the patient comes in, they would present a Medicaid card for, say, Iowa, for example, and then that information would be recorded by the doctor's office, mm -hmm. and that's how, um, that's how the office would know and be able to use that information to calculate if there's any out-of-state Medicaid. Patients. You know, I, I have to say I haven't drilled down to that level to see because, like I said, we do have such a large Medicaid volume that when I run those reports, I'm not looking to see specifically what state they're at. So it's a, um, it just runs the Medicaid volume is what it does, so I'm assuming. So if the, the, the individual who sent in this question, if that does not really fulfill or you do not feel that, that we have answered adequately, um, please feel free to respond again. We'll probably, if we get a follow-up to your question, um, be able to um, respond to it when we get back to the office. And again, all questions, whether it's during the webinar or after the webinar, as people think of that, 
them uh, in the next week even, uh, we will collect and um, answer them and create a frequently asked questions document and that will be posted on our website. Um, we have another question come in. How do you define needy patient? Um, okay, I can answer that. Um, how we define needy patient is someone who doesn't have any insurance. Uh, not, not counting Medicaid, not counting other insurances. If they come in and they don't have any insurance and are um, seen off of like a sliding scale fee or, or for free, then that would be considered needy. We are still waiting for other questions that uh, might come in. I'm going to ask, could you put the next slide up? This is technically our last slide. Um, this is, again, our contact information. Um, my name, Karen's name, phone number, email address, and of course the website. And as we're waiting to make sure that we are not going to miss any further questions, I want to offer the reminder that we will have a frequently asked questions document that will be posted um, because we're going to give it some time, probably close to a week, to allow any post-webinar uh, questions that people might think of during the day or uh, just come up. Uh, we'll be collecting those, answering those, and we will post them. Also, this webinar is being recorded, and it will be converted to YouTube for format. Uh, that takes a little bit longer time, but we will certainly email everyone and let them know when uh, the, web the webinar as a YouTube format is available on our website. And currently, we have... Uh, the power copy of the PowerPoint slides on our website um, and it will be found um, on the library page. Uh, Diane, I'd just like to add that uh, while we're wrapping up this presentation, um, I just want to be sure to uh, remind everyone that program year uh, 16, which is what we're currently in, uh, has a deadline of April 30th. 2017. So if you have not participated in the EHR incentive program, this is the final year for participation and your deadline is April 30th, um, 2017. So that's one of the reasons why we're holding this webinar, especially on um, the AIU topic that it's on right now, because we are trying to get as many providers to participate in this program um, that are eligible, because we want you to benefit from it and your patients to benefit, benefit from it. We had another question come in. Um, if we have traditionally done individual reporting, is it okay to switch to the group reporting? Um, I can take that question. I, I think that would be uh, kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. We could definitely look at that. Um, we'd have to kind of see why if you reported individually, why are you going to group reporting and if it makes sense for your the clinic. So uh, for the person that asked that question and if anyone else has the same question, um, certainly email us and we will take a look at your clinic specifically. Thank you. And um, again, we, we're, we are getting some emails that are pretty specific uh, to uh, a vendor group or a vendor and I just want to let you know that we will be answering these um, if not during the webinar when we get back to the office so we can discuss in that email um, your individual case and then we will extrapolate uh, from that question a general question for the uh, frequently asked questions document that we will be posting. I can answer this one, Diane. Okay. Um, it's regarding uh, patient encounters, and if the, the question is, if we participate as a group, do we have to report all of our providers' encounters? Many of our providers are PRN and only work a few days a year, so we'll have a very low number of patients. Um, the, the answer is yes. If you're reporting uh, group volume, then 
you need to report encounters from everybody in your group, not just the providers that qualify for the EHR incentive program, the five provider types that we have, such as um, physician, dentist, uh, nurse practitioner, uh, not just the five provider types, but all of the providers in your office would uh, have their encounters included. And it's really important that whatever you do for to get your denominator, which is the total Medicaid, the total encounter number, you use the same uh, criteria to form your numerator, which is only the Medicaid encounters. So basically, when you have your numerator and denominator, you're comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges by taking a different population for your denominator. Patient volume is, I want to reiterate, it, it's, um, it's, it is a sticky and complex issue. We do have many resources on our website that help clarify those um, definitions of numerator and denominators. And when this question comes up and is part of the document on our website, we will provide those links as well. Um, and as always, if you um, do not feel you're getting an adequate answer to your question, uh, even if it uh, doesn't satisfy your question on the frequently asked uh, questions document, uh, we are always here. Please feel free to email in at any time, and uh, we will be happy to continue the conversation um, until we can um, come to a resolution and hopefully get it uh, clear and uh, understood. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a complex uh, process, and we, that's what we are here to do is to assist and clarify. And I'd also like to add that once we receive an attestation, we, we look over it. Our process is we do two reviews on it. So one staff will do one review and then another staff will do another uh, complete and separate review. And at any time, if we have any questions, we will certainly ask, uh, usually by email. So it's really important that that email address is correct, but we will certainly ask. And uh, if something was filled out wrong by mistake, uh, it's, it's very easy for us to return the attestation for you as the provider to correct the the one error or one thing that was entered maybe incorrectly, you don't have to redo your whole attestation and return it to us. Uh, we really try to work with the providers who are participating in this program and just if you submit something and think, oh, you, you did something wrong, there's always an opportunity to correct it. So. Very good. Do you have anything else to add to that, Melissa? I would say that that's such a blessing because I've definitely done that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've, I know that I've thought I clicked the right button and didn't click the right button. So it, the, I, I have to say the staff are phenomenal to work with. Very helpful. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. And we seem to have a pause in the questions. So I want to thank Melissa again for being here. Thank you. And uh, it's always nice to have somebody from the other side who experiences this process from the provider side to offer their insights, their tips, uh, their experiences. Um, thank you to the staff for putting this together, Karen and um, Labana for assisting in this presentation. Uh, this will formally close the webinar for the Nebraska Medicaid EHR Incentive Program. We want to thank all of you for taking the time to log in. We want to thank you for all the questions you submitted. Continue to send those questions. We'll be monitoring this for the next week. Identify that it is a question concerning the webinar so we can make sure that it's included in our frequently asked questions. We're wishing you all a wonderful afternoon and thank you for your time.